Hello, my name is Connor Hicks. I'm a staff developer at 1Password, and for the last year and a half or so, I've been building Suborbital, which is a group of open source repos that work together to make WebAssembly on the server a useful and practical tool. I'm going to be talking about building web services for a future based on WebAssembly, and I'm going to be doing a deep dive into Atmo, which is one of the Suborbital projects. So a little bit more about what Suborbital does. It is a collection of projects. It started out as a functions as a service system, but has since evolved to include multiple projects that are all working together towards this goal of server-side WebAssembly. So the projects are Reactor. It's a job scheduler. It's kind of the core that actually runs the WebAssembly modules. It man manages their memory, inputs, outputs, and all the asynchronous execution that needs to happen. Grav is a message bus that allows Go applications to communicate asynchronously using plugins for discovering each other and also actually communicating with each other over various protocols. And then Vector is an HTTP framework that integrates really tightly with Grav and Reactor. And when you put those three together, it forms Atmo. And that is what I call the batteries included WebAssembly framework. It includes all of the APIs and the server side runtime that allows you to build cloud native applications with WebAssembly. And Atmo is being developed alongside what I call the SUFA design pattern. This is a way of building applications so that they're easy to understand and easy to deploy. So SUFA stands for Simple Unified Function Based Applications and it quite simply means that your application should be simple to understand and simple to deploy using something like a simple auto scaling group. It should be unified, meaning that when you build them it results in a single thing. That thing can be a Docker image or it can be an Atmo application bundle, but you don't need to build many Docker images or, or many different things in order for your system to work properly. And then function-based means that you are segmenting your application into multiple different functions that are composed together to form your business logic. And we'll talk about how that works uh, using the directive, which is a declarative file that describes your application and actually lets you compose those functions together using different control flows and uh, different clauses and operators that make it really easy to work with complex logic. We'll talk about a whole lot more of that in a minute. So we're going to go deep into Atmo. I'm going to give you a quick tour of an Atmo application and we'll talk about how it all works. The application that I'm going to go through is called Telescope. It is on my GitHub. Um, my GitHub is Cohix, C-O-H-I-X. You can find all the source code there and you can try it out for yourself. So the directive is where everything starts and so I'll take you through a quick tour of it. Uh, it describes all of the endpoints that this application will provide. Things like getting files, getting a list of repos, getting a single repo, and generating a report. And we'll talk about this one a little bit more later. But the overall goal of the application is to provide information about the repos in our organization. So let's dive in and look at the list repos runnable. So this one's written in Rust. Atmo supports Rust and Swift, and more languages are coming soon. But what they all have in common is they use something called the suborbital runnable API in order to gain access to capabilities that server-side applications need to operate properly. So things like access and cache, making HTTP requests and more, these are all granted by the host to work with the WebAssembly sandbox, ensure you have everything you need to build your application without sacrificing the security that WebAssembly provides. So the runnable itself conforms to the runnable trait, and that just means it has a run function that takes an input, provides either an output or an error, and then it uses that runnable API to actually do something interesting. So in this case, we're using the file API to get some configuration. And this allows you to actually package static files with your application, and they get mounted as a read-only file system that you can access from your modules. So for example, if I'm getting this organization configuration file that tells me which organization that the application is being run against, and I can use things like the HTTP client and access things like a cache. Now, this directive is using the uh, the runnable to respond directly to the request 
And so the runnable responds with JSON and actually sets some response headers like the content type. So let's take a look at what it actually means to run this application. We're going to use the suborbital CLI tool, which is called SUBO, and we're going to run SUBO build. I'm going to pass the native flag because I want to use the toolchains on my local machine. If you don't have the various language toolchains installed, SUBO actually ships with a Docker runtime that can build your applications without needing to have, for example, the Carco toolchain installed. So it builds all of my WebAssembly modules and it builds a bundle that includes the WebAssembly modules, my static files, and my directive. So it's everything that Atmo needs to actually execute my application. So if I start up a development server here using SUBO dev, it is going to start Atmo and we can take a look at how it works. So I'll start by making a request to that repos endpoint to get a list of all of the repos in the suborbital organization. And take note that it took about 300 milliseconds to respond to that request. You know, it was talking to the GitHub API, so there's multiple network hops involved, etc. But if you'll remember, we were talking to the cache and we were actually filling that in with repo information. So if we go over here and make a request to get a single repo, uh, you'll notice that it executes much more quickly because the get repo runnable is actually accessing the cache. And if the repo information is available, it is returning that. But if it's not, it goes, accesses the GitHub API and then fills in the cache behind it. So that's an example of some of the different suborbital runnable APIs available. Um, but let's look at a slightly more complicated uh, handler. So this report endpoint, for example, it combines multiple runnables together in order to do something a little bit more fun. So we're using the list repos runnable from the other handler, but instead of just responding directly with that information, this particular handler actually uses the for each operator to iterate over the array of repos and perform an operation on each element. So we're actually gonna be calling the send report runnable on each element of the repos list and that send report function looks a little bit like this. It's going to get the element that it is being operated upon. It's going to filter out the repos that have less than five stars. It is going to uh, read a configuration file called webhook to know where it wants to send this report to. And it's gonna construct a payload and then actually send a webhook using the HTTP client. So why don't we take a look at that? If we send that API v1 report request, you'll see something happening in the background here. And we're actually getting some messages in Discord. Uh, and we're getting a report about the various repos and the number of stargazers that they have, as long as they have more than five. So this is you know, a couple of different examples about how you can compose WebAssembly modules together to form uh, logic. And I hope it's a good example of how WebAssembly can be useful on the server. Now, there is uh, a bunch of additional APIs that I didn't talk about here. And there are a number of other control flow clauses that you can use in the directive. So I suggest you look at atmo.suborbital.dev to see the entire documentation and what is possible. The SUBO CLI also has a number of other features as well that I suggest you check out. It's very useful for building WebAssembly applications, whether they're being used for Atmo or not. So that's the end of the demo. And I just wanna close out by saying thank you for having me at the conference. And I hope you'll check out Suborbital at github.com slash suborbital. And please don't hesitate to open issues or join our Discord if you have any questions or if you want to ask about building something with one of the projects. So that's all for me, and I will see you all in the conference.